With the clock ticking and a serial killer on the loose, will these detectives nail the murderer, or will another woman fall by the blade? Watch out as there will be spoilers ahead. Enjoy! Today, we'll be recapping a 2021 American mystery thriller called The Little Things. In 1990, a teenage girl, Tina, is driving on a deserted highway singing along to her stereo when she sees some headlights approaching her car. A few minutes later, Tina realizes that the other car's driver is following her. The stalker races past Tina and stops ahead, waiting. Tina quickly speeds past the driver who maliciously follows her. Following this, Tina drives to a gas station intending to seek help, but to her horror, the place is closed. She hides from her stalker while the stalker opens his car's trunk, revealing duct tape and ropes. Luckily, Tina spots a truck approaching the gas station, so she runs to the highway and stops the truck, relief flooding her veins. Kern County's Deputy Sheriff Joe Deke Deacon is responding to a concerned citizen. The man complains that his shop's neon sign keeps getting vandalized. Deacon promises to investigate further and goes to the office. The sheriff assigns him to accompany the newly appointed hotshot lead detective Jimmy Baxter to collect evidence in the recent murder in LA. Deacon was once a prominent detective in Los Angeles, but had suffered from trauma that caused him to lose everything he had, and now he lives alone. The deceased is Julie Brock, found with her hands bound and a sack over her head. Since she was a prostitute, the detectives conclude that her murder is tied to a string of other murders in the area, all involving prostitutes. While investigating the scene, Jimmy notes that Julie's body had been moved, so the killer must have returned to the scene after the murder. Meanwhile, Deacon's attention is drawn to a nearby building. Here, he finds a chair, and the window looks directly into Julie's apartment. A shiver runs down his spine as he realizes that this case is similar to the one he had been unable to solve, leading to his downward spiral years ago. That night, a young woman, Rhonda, finishes her jog and parts way with her friend. As she enters her house, a car drives into her driveway. The model of the vehicle is similar to the one that terrorized Tina earlier. Rhonda is reported missing the following day, and flyers are posted all over the town. Deacon meets up with Jimmy, who has found a suspect. The suspect, Stan, is horrified to hear of Julie's death. When asked about the other victims, the man stands up and retreats in fear, as though he can sense Deacon's presence in the other room. Meanwhile, Deacon visits Flo, revealing that the two knew each other when Deacon worked in LA. Flo confirms that the case is similar to the former cases. However, she found that Julie had roast beef as her last meal, while it's common knowledge that Julie was a strict vegetarian. Flo also points out some strange teeth marks on the victim's face and a cut on her legs, showing that the killer had shaved her. Sodium benzoate is also found on the victim's body. Deacon establishes that the killer takes sexual pleasure in his victims, which might be why he returned to the scene. Flo and Deacon hang out and reminisce on the old days. Flo reveals a necklace she always wears. The necklace has a bullet mark on its pendant, bringing back a horrible memory to Deacon. Deacon returns to Julie's apartment to gather more clues. Julie's food in the fridge is rotten save for a milk carton. There is also a beer can suggesting that the killer had tormented Julie for days and would watch her from the neighboring building. Jimmy feels that Deacon is well equipped to assist him on the case, but Jimmy's captain tells him what had happened to Deacon. He became so obsessed with the initial murders that he got divorced to work on it. Shortly after, he suffered a heart attack and had major surgery to fix it. This is why Jimmy shouldn't bring Deacon back onto the case, as the effects might be fatal this time. Deacon takes vacation days from Bakersfield, staying in LA and working on the case. He rents out a motel room in a shady part of the town. On one wall, he mounts several pictures of the murdered victims and lies awake at night tormented by the women, especially one called Mary. Jimmy visits Rhonda's parents to learn more about her disappearance. The devastated parents reveal that Rhonda usually wore a red clip on her hair. Jimmy learns that another body has been found washed up beneath a bridge. He rushes to the scene and is relieved when the victim isn't Rhonda. Here, Jimmy learns about the previous murder and the fact that they are dealing with a serial killer. All of the victims, save for Rhonda, were sex workers, and their cause of death was stabbing. Jimmy informs Deacon that Stan had ended things for himself following Julie's death. The two men hang out at a bar, discussing the case and what they know. Deacon takes Jimmy to the scene of the first murders, expressing how helpless he felt seeing the bodies. Later, Deacon shares a meal with Jimmy's family, prompting him to visit his ex-wife. Deacon's attention is drawn to the local repair shop as the investigation continues. He remembers that Julie's landlord had shared that Julie's fridge wasn't working, hence the rotten food. 
However, she had called the local repair shop for a handyman. Deacon visits the shop and is surprised to see that they sell the same wire that had bound the murder victims. He also spots a car suspected to be the killer's car. The car's owner, Albert Sparmer, becomes Deacon's primary suspect. Deacon starts following Sparmer around town. He witnesses him stopping at a roast beef shop and giving prostitutes some food, showing that he is friendly with them. Deacon's suspicions build when he sees Sparmer stop at a place where murder victims had been found. Sparmer is apprehended and brought in for questioning. In the station, Tina, who has come to report her stalker, sees Sparmer and recognizes him. However, her recognition wavers when she is shown pictures of other perps, confessing that she was too panicked to recognize the stalker. She cannot be a credible witness either since she has already seen Sparmer in handcuffs. In the interrogation room, Sparmer appears to be taunting the officers. He is shown a picture and correctly states that the woman in the picture is dead, a fact only known to police officers. Furthermore, he gets an erection after seeing a crime scene photo. This causes a furious Deacon to storm into the room and threaten Sparmer. The interrogation ends and Deacon is dismissed from the case. Later, Jimmy meets with his captain, who reveals that while Sparmer's fingerprint resembles the killer's, it isn't a definitive match. Sparmer also has a solid alibi on the night of the murder. Shockingly, Sparmer had confessed to murder eight years ago, but the police soon found that he couldn't have committed it. In truth, Sparmer likes being considered a suspect, and all the evidence found is circumstantial. Jimmy refuses to let Sparmer go unscathed, so he seeks out Deacon at the motel. Deacon's obsession with the case takes him aback, but remembering Rhonda, he swallows his pride. The two men still believe that Sparmer is the killer, so they go to his apartment for an illegal search. Deacon finds several suspicious things in the apartment, including false teeth, sodium benzoate mouthwash, peculiar videotapes, numerous serial killer books, and newspaper clippings of the murder alongside a watch and a rabbit's foot. Sparmer sees the men in his house and calls the police, citing that an officer has been shot. Luckily, Deacon hears the report on his portable police scanner, narrowly escaping the police. Jimmy looks at the crowd and sees a police Sparmer watching the unfolding scene. Jimmy continues tailing Sparmer and witnesses him talking to a prostitute. When Sparmer is alone, Jimmy apprehends him. Sparmer confesses to kidnapping Rhonda and promises to take Jimmy to where he buried her body. Jimmy and Sparmer drive to the desert, with Sparmer misleading Jimmy as to the burial locations. Eventually, Sparmer reveals that he has never killed anyone and simply likes the thrill of being thought to have done so. He taunts Jimmy for being a lousy detective, saying he cannot even protect his family. These words infuriate Jimmy and he hits Sparmer with a shovel, accidentally killing him on the spot. Jimmy is horrified by his actions, so he calls Deacon for help. A flashback of what happened to Deacon is shown on the drive over. After finding the murdered girls, Deacon heard a noise in the woods and fired his gun, thinking the killer was still lurking around. Unfortunately, the bullet hit Mary, one of the surviving women, and killed her instantly. Jimmy's boss and Flo had helped cover up the murder, but the memory haunts him to date. Deacon arrives and witnesses everything. He has Jimmy dig several holes and they bury Sparmer in one of them. Deacon convinces Jimmy that Sparmer was their man and that his death means the survival of many women. He advises the man to forget the incident or it will haunt him for life. That night, Deacon visits Sparmer's apartment and cleans it, removing anything incriminating. The following day, Jimmy receives a package containing a red clip, like the one Rhonda had been wearing when she was abducted. There's also a note saying, no angels. Later, Deacon burns everything he got from Sparmer's apartment, including a new pack of barrettes. Do you think the detectives caught the right guy? Do leave us a comment telling us your favorite part of the movie. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time, folks, take care and goodbye.